Hello, my name's Mark from G-Code Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to bring you some tips on how to program PEC drilling cycles with G-Code. So let's start off by having a look at the G83 PEC drilling cycle line and look at what information goes into that to be able to PEC drill our holes. So let's we'll start off with G83. Now this is the G code that activates PEC drilling cycle. There is other G codes, which we'll discuss in a minute, that can also do PEC drilling. So our X, Y, and Z coordinates here. So if our tool is already in line with the hole, so if we wrap it to that position before we start our PEC drilling cycle, we don't need to give X and Y coordinates. We only need to give these X and Y coordinates here. If our drill is not in line with the hole, that it's gonna start drilling our first hole. Okay, so our Z is the depth of this hole as well. So our Z is a final depth and that controls how deep our holes will be. R is our attract value. So this is where our drill retracts after each peck and we can set it to whether it retracts inside the part or totally clears the part to remove that swarf there. Now, if we're drilling a blind hole, we might need to pause that Z movement at the bottom of the hole just to clean up that face there. So we might need to add a dwell and we can do that by adding a P value. Now this is totally optional and it's done in milliseconds. So P 1000 would be one second. So Bella and mind as you're programming your dwells. It works the same as the G04. Now the Q value is the depth of each peck. So say we want to peck three millimeters and then retract out and then come down and start the next peck. We set that with a Q value. So that's the depth of our peck. And finally, we need to add a feed rate to our drill. So we do that with an F word. So that's a very quick overview of the PEC drilling cycle line of code that we would write for G-Code. So let's have a look and see how this compares to a lathe. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty similar. I mean, we don't have the Y axis, obviously, because we're on a two axis machine here, but everything else is pretty much the same and it works very similar on a CNC lathe also. Now, with a drilling cycle on a lathe, we tend to only drill the one hole. We wouldn't drill multiple holes with a drilling cycle unless we are doing off-center work. But if we're doing on-center work, then it works very similar. So let's have a look at this G83 within a program. So I've highlighted here where the G83 G code sits. And a bit of code before this is just positioning our tool over the first hole that we're going to drill. So in this case, we're cutting the hole that's X20, Y20. So the first hole over there on the left hand side is the one that this cycle starts on. Now after the G83, I've added the G91 to put the machine into incremental positioning. Now, a lot of machines, you don't need to do this. It, as you switch over to the drilling cycles, it automatically assumes you're going to be using incremental and will switch the machine over automatically. Not all machines do this, which is why I've added the G91 G code in this line, just in case. So there's no harm putting it there if the machine has already switched itself over to G91. And if it hasn't, that line is there anyway to make sure that we are in incremental and not absolute when we're doing our drilling cycles. So the Z depth here is the depth of our hole. Now I'm drilling down to a 10 mil plate, so I'm going two millimeters past that to make sure that hole is cleared up at the end there. The R 1.0 is our retract value. So this will retract the cutter one millimeter above the surface of our material there. Then we've got our dwell value, our P number, our P word. So P 1000 there is a one second delay time. So once the drill is at full depth, it will dwell for one second with the drill still rotating before it rapids back out. So that will clean up that blind hole for us if we're drilling into a blind hole. Now, if we don't add the P word in there at all, it doesn't matter, it just won't dwell. It won't affect our program at all. So the Q value is our depth of each peck. So I'll set this to three millimeters. So where we're going at 12 millimeters, it would do four pecks. And then finally, a feed rate. Now this will highly depend on the material of your drill and also the material you are drilling. So I've highlighted here our full drilling cycle. So we've gone into detail about the G83 line. So let's look at the rest of this. So our X50 there, the following movement after our G83 line. So this just moves our cutter to 50 millimeters in X 
from its last known position. Because we're in incremental at the moment, not absolute, so it will move the cutter 50 millimeters in the plus direction on the X. And as soon as it gets there, it will drill the hole using the information on the G83 line. So we don't need to give any extra information as we're doing this. So our next line there, another 50 millimeter moving X, will move us over to the far right bottom hole of our component. And then finally, Y40 will bring us up 40 millimeters in a plus Y direction from that last hole to the position of our final hole. Now we can add feed rates on each one of these lines and we can use different G codes to change our retract value as well. So we can use G98 and G99 to control that. Now more about that over on my website, G Code Tutor. I've got a free article about that very subject. So as we come down past our movements, once we've done our Y40 hole and we've wrapped it back out automatically, it next reads the G80 G code. Now all cycles need to end in a G80. This tells the machine that we're no longer in the cycle and we can move around the machine in a normal fashion. And because I use G91, I'm also switching back to G90 to put the machine into absolute mode before we continue reading the rest of the program. Now it's important to note that at the beginning of every sequence, now a sequence is the code you see in front of you, a sequence is a single tool uh, doing its work in G code. So at the beginning of every sequence, I like to add a G80 G code just in case. Now this way, if we are running our cycle and we decide to stop the machine halfway through and rerun that sequence again, or maybe rerun a different sequence, it will read that G80 line at the beginning of each sequence. So it won't be in that drilling cycle mode. So that's a good safety tip there. So that's the G83G code in its most basic form, but we can add more information to our G83 line to give us more control over those pecs. So this is how we would do it. We would add I, J and K values to our G83 pec cycle line to give us that bit more control. So by adding I, this is our first cutting depth. So if we set this say to five millimeters, the hole would be drilled by five millimeters before the drill rapids out, and then it'd come down and drill a less amount. And that less amount is controlled by J. So we could have say five millimeters for our first cut, and then four millimeters for our second, and then three millimeters for our third, etc. And we would set that by using J. So we would set J to one millimeter if we want a one millimeter reduction of each peck after each peck is done. And then finally, we have K, which is our minimum peck depth. If we keep minus in one millimeter on each peck, eventually we're gonna run out of room and our drill is not going to be pecking at all. It's just gonna come in and be bouncing out without removing material. So we need to add a minimum peck depth. So this would depend a lot on your drill and your material and what works for this particular component that you're drilling. So by adding I, J and K, we can add a lot more control to our pecs. So if we're having some trouble with maybe an awkward material like ink canal or something we're cutting and it's not cutting the way we want, we can add in I, J and K to give us much more control over those pecs. So that's the G83 pec drilling cycle in its entirety. Now, did you know we can also use a G73 pec drilling cycle? Now the G73, is uh, where we don't wish the tool to wrap it right out of the material each time. We just want to do a chip breaking cycle, which is just pulling out a little bit before we come back in without retracting the drill completely from the material. So if we're doing partial retracts during our pec drilling cycle, we would use a chip breaking cycle, which is often G73 on your controls. Now remember, there is many different versions of FANUC out there and many different versions of G-code. So this may be different on your machine. So if you enjoyed what you've learned in this lesson, head over to my website, gcodetutor.com, where I have a whole page of free articles, plus a load of paid courses there if you want to learn to program G-code to a professional level.